Our parent company, Comcast, uh, just out uh, with earnings. Uh, the expectations that analysts had, and there are myriad expectations, not just what we normally do for a company uh, in terms of the top and the bottom line, but let's at least look at those two, uh, those, those two con components. Consolidated revenue was $30.1 billion, and that was about $200 million ahead of the consensus of $29.88 uh, billion. Adjusted earnings per share, which may or may not be the best thing to use uh, on Comcast with all the cash flow and EBITDA uh, numbers. It's such a, a varied and, and multifaceted company. But just to look at it, a dollar four uh, was uh, five cents above the street consensus of 99 uh, cents a share. And that, if you want to know what kind of growth that was, just in adjusted earnings per share, almost 14%. Free cash flow growth might be more representative. That was up 19.4 percent. Uh, and uh, you can, I mean, where do you want to start? Uh, theme parks continue to do well. Um, I, I didn't know that the outsiders was, uh, or the, I'm sorry, the holdovers was one of ours, too, was one of uh, Universal's. But Oppenheimer, holdovers, studio momentum continued, a lot of Oscars for Oppenheimer, uh, obviously, and an exciting slate, according to uh, the company coming up for this year, including uh, the Fall Guy. Who's in the Fall Guy? I think that's Ryan Gosling. Ryan Gosling isn't and it? Emily Blunt. Yeah. I think Ryan Gosling. I, I used to think the other Ryan was more handsome. Now I've seen some pictures of Ryan Gosling. Ever he since and he Emily be, Blunt have great chemistry. Ever since he was Ken, I, I find him more. Uh, he's, an, he's an attractive man. Uh, connectivity and platform revenue consistent at 20.3 billion and adjusted uh, EBITDA. Uh, 8.2 billion. That was up 1.3 percent. Andrew, we were, you know, we kicked this around because we yep. we were on TV. We're in the TV business, kind of. Yep. <laughs> in business news with cable news with a ticker, but video. Uh, we watch this every, and, and Comcast says again and again they're not going to chase unprofitable Subs. Biz, business. Mm -hmm. But what what was the number again? It was over 400,000 uh, down. Four, uh, domestic video customers decreased 487,000 to 13.6 million, and that's right. been that's the cord cutting that people worry about. Right. And um, but at the same time, Peacock paid subscribers overall, up 55 percent. That was good, and that was after that unbelievable NFL football that football game. The football right. game, right. and you had Oppenheimer you. as the most watched uh, pay one movie in Peacock history. Well, you like. You're not in like you know in a boat with a hole going like that, but you you do want the streaming business well, the to try is, to go up the quicker question is than whether the, the economics of the streaming business are ever will ever be. be as good as the cable business. Right. That is the fundamental sort of question, which is you hope. can have the X you can know the axis going this way and this way. Can we hope? We can all pray. We can pray. Hope and pray. Hope and pray. But hope it, and prayers. Hope and prayers. I just well, quickly. Right now the, the shares are reacting positively. It's yeah, up two percent. Yeah. That's good. Um, but but you know. The other thing, small, though, that but 487, 13.6 million. How many other half? Right. A, but here's the here's, here's half of here's of, the uh, other piece of good news that I think is fair to say. Some of the folks who are leaving the traditional cable bundle are not just buying in via Peacock; they're actually buying in by by YouTube TV, which is a which which is a bundle. They're buying into uh, the Hulu uh, Live product, which is a bundle. So there is this sort of movement around where people are looking almost for the interface. And the truth is a lot of the folks who have been subscribed through the bundle have been getting it at a discount. That's the other piece. So you've seen a lot of the cable providers, including Comcast, discount heavily because there have been these moments where, you know, I shouldn't say this. If you call up your cable provider right now and say, I'm thinking of leaving for YouTube TV, all of a sudden they'll say, OK, uh, what used to be a $90 product will sell you for the next 24 months or 12 months for $30. So. That, and this goes back to profitable subs versus unprofitable subs. During the pandemic, it was broadband, obviously. Just so you know, the uh, ARPU, you know, average revenue was up 4.2 percent, highly competitive market, but subs flat, basically. Broadband subs were relatively flat year over year. Domestic broadband revenue grew, grew by 3.9 percent. But you wonder, how about growth? Where's... I mean, the growth is going to be theme parks, growth is going to be movie studios, wireless business. Wireless was up quite a bit, and I guess there's some growth out there, but you definitely saw 
part of the of the the great pandemic uh, performance was when everybody was adding, was getting wired up, and that's not happening. So I mean, stocks down from where 60, 60 something, but uh, up today.